Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice was an okay movie, but did you know that the comics that inspired the movie are world renowned? Hey guys, welcome to Comics the Movies. I'm Comic Man Jake, and here in the Comic Cave, anything can happen. Today we're going to be talking about one of my favorites, actually, Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice. Now, most of you have probably seen the theatrical version and thought, eh, it's okay. Um, I would actually recommend watching the Ultimate Edition. The Ultimate Edition has an additional 30 minutes to it and explains a lot of the plot holes that watching the theatrical movie, I mean, they should have released this Ultimate Edition. I mean, it's just plain and simple. So after watching the movie, I found two stories that were really used in the movie. The first one, and the most famous of them all, is called Batman The Dark Knight Returns. Now you guys are looking at this and going, that's Superman. No, that's Batman. This is a very famous one, um, written by Frank Miller, uh, and drawn by uh, Klaus Johnson and Lutton Berry. Sorry, inked by Klaus Johnson and uh, drawn by Lynn Berry. Um, this one was they take the idea of Bruce Wayne being old. Everyone asks like why is Bruce Wayne such a dick in the movie? Why is he killing people? Why does he seem old and pissed? You read these because it's a four issue series um, you understand why. Batman in this one it's like he's retired. After Jason Todd died the second Robin, he retired. He was just like, I'm done. The city doesn't, I, I, I give up. This is just, I'm retired, I'm old. And the whole thing is basically like, he's drinking. Like, we, we never see, I was one of my friends says, like, you know what? I never see Batman drink. He doesn't drink. And I'm like, but in the Dark Knight, well, in the Dark Knight Returns, he does drink. He's old. He doesn't care. He doesn't play by the rules. He uses a gun. I mean, heck, look at this right here in this cover art. You can see there's a gun. And a sword. This isn't jo a joke. And I know that they, they took a lot of this from us because when they did the San Diego Comic Con, when it was uh, announced in the 2013 San Diego Comic Con, uh, the guy who plays the general uh, quoted this, and it's exactly from the comic. Let me get to it. And what this is in this, in this scene is actually this. Bruce Wayne kicking Clark. Batman kicking Superman. And he's beating the crap out of him. Dare I say. And this is what they said. And got me all excited when I heard about this. I want you to remember, Clark, in all the years to come, in your most private moments, I want you to remember my hand at your throat. I want you to remember the man who beat you. This is an amazing story. That's the end. I just gave you the end of it. You can usually buy these on Amazon. I have this collector's edition which has the hardcover of all the issues. Um, very well story. They went on to do more sequels. I haven't read them yet, so I don't have an opinion on them yet, but from what I heard, some of them are okay and some of them are like, eh. So, but, um, the Bruce Wayne aspect of Batman vs. Superman is very much taken from The Dark Knight Returns. Um, he's old. You can see, like, Ben Affleck is more, like, he's not as suave as a playboy, he's more of an old man realizing like, I'm old, I've done this, and he, I think he says that in the movie, uh, I've been doing this for 20 years, you know, the words I saw were people dressed up as a uh, joke or clowns, something like that. It's when he's talking to, to Clark, but um, it, it really does like hint that this is set, that maybe this is set kind of close to with the Batman origin being more about the Dark Knight Returns. It's an older Batman that um, 
does not give a crap. I mean, he uses guns, he uses everything, and he does beat the crap out of Superman. So the second story that uh, they used in that movie was The Death of Superman. The Death of Superman was a comic that was world-renowned, also known for uh, when comics... Basically, characters could come back from the dead. When Back in the day, when uh, comic books characters... A comic book character died in that comic. They stayed dead. They weren't brought back. They weren't... Um, they were done. They were absolutely done. And the death and return of Superman kind of stopped that. The death of uh, Superman started in December uh, 1992 and ran until October 1993. And it really does bring in the character Doomsday. Uh, though he isn't Zod, he's actually a Cadmus-owned uh, uh, creation of some sort. Uh, and uh, he doesn't... Batman, uh, sorry, Superman doesn't die from a stab wound uh, from a Kryptonian spear. He actually dies knocking out Doomsday. He doesn't kill Doomsday, he knocks him out. And the whole time, like, he, Doomsday's throwing him around and everything, and there's this famous one where uh, they have this last punch, and you see both of them nick each other, and Doomsday goes down, and Superman, like, staggers, and then goes down, and then finally draw, draws his last best and dies. Um, now that one was written by Dan Jurgens, uh, who wrote a lot of the Superman mythos. And, you know, he also... Well, now he's not. Brian Michael Bendis is doing it, but he wrote Action Comics uh, in the Rebirth series, if you're reading that right now. So overall, how relatable is this to the comics? It's actually pretty relatable if you actually read these comics. You can see the aspects that they take from each one of them. Uh, if I had to give this out of a 10, like how much like comic related it was, I'd actually say it's probably like an 8. Um, mainly because like they had to mix universes um, and mix stories. But other than that, like when I first watched it, it was one of my favorites. I watched it, you know, even though it was theatrical, like two or three times. Because to me, it was, as a comic book guy, it was amazing. But as a film guy, when I watched it, it was kind of like, nah, they had some problems. But, I mean, they brought a good fan base in. Again, you watch this, I mean, there's so many scenes in here that you would be like, why didn't they put this in the movie? Like in the original theatrical, they would have made millions on this. And they did. They made millions on just selling these. And um, for all you guys that think that Ben Affleck's a bad, uh, th that don't like him, you got to realize Ben Affleck is a huge Batman nerd. He's, he's a huge fan of him. And I mean, he was supposed to direct the Batman movie, the standalone movie. He was supposed to star in it. But because of creative, I believe because of creative uh, differences, uh, he decided not to. And anyone who knows like Ben Affleck's writing and his directing and his acting when he does it all in one, it's Oscar. I mean, it's Oscar worthy. He he's won like Argo is one of the ones. The bank I think it's called the Bank Job is another one. Um, a number of ones that he has starred and um, written and direct have been good. So when I heard he was going to do that, I was like, this is. I'm set, he's gonna do good with that. And then they told me they're not doing that and it's gonna be Matt Reeves. So we'll see how it goes. But I don't know, maybe it's gonna be good, maybe it's not. Well, that's all the time we got for today. Well, thank you guys for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed comics to movies as much as I enjoyed like, actually doing the research and actually uh, doing this for you guys. Follow me on uh, Instagram or Twitter. Uh, there you'll see some updates that, on what's coming up on future content. And if you like what you saw today, hit that like button. And uh, if you like what you're seeing so far, hit that subscribe button. There's more content coming. And you know what? Let's uh, throw something down in the comments down there. You know, what did you think of Batman v Superman? Did you like it? Did you think it was horrible? Did you think, uh, you know, it was Batman killed too many people? Superman was too dark? Uh, did you, I mean, love it? Let me know in the comments down below. Thanks for watching guys.